Welcome to Weather Extra on CBS News Bay Area. I'm KPIX 5 meteorologist Paul Hagan. Every week, we're taking a closer look at a weather topic, a, de a deeper dive than what we can do within our daily weather cast on KPIX. This week, I want to focus on how exceptional drought and our warming climate are combining to put western water supplies at risk. It's not just the Bay Area, it's not just California. The western U.S. as a whole has fallen into an extreme dry spell. Despite our rainy October and December and a nice amount of rain for the Pacific Northwest coastline, the majority of California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, and Idaho combined have had another mostly dry wet season. And more than 44 million people are experiencing drought across just those five states. Conditions are just as bad when you add in Montana, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico to the mix. The country's two largest reservoirs, Lake Mead and Lake Powell, are both at record low levels since they were first constructed 86 and 56 years ago, respectively. And drought conditions are forecast to continue, to continue for the vast majority of the western U.S. at least through July. It will be well beyond that for most of the Bay Area and California now that we're entering the dry season. Drought and dry spells are common here in the West, but recent years have been unprecedented. We discussed in a weather extra segment last year how the ongoing southwestern mega drought since 2000 is the most severe of the past 1,200 years. A recent study suggests that the drought right now would still exist, but would be 42 percent less intense without human-caused climate change. These kinds of exceptional droughts, combined with the continued warming of the climate, put water in the West at risk. The western U.S. is a large region with diverse water demands, including water supplies for rural communities, growing cities, tribal nations, critical ecosystems, as well as agricultural, industrial, and hydropower uses. Irrigation is the largest of all western water demands. The 17 western states account for 81 percent of the country's irrigation water use. California has the highest irrigation water demands of any state. That water is utilized by our state to supply much of the country's fruit, nuts, and produce. When there isn't enough water to meet these demands, it can have costly consequences. According to preliminary estimates from researchers at UC Merced, drought in 2021 cost California's agriculture industry an estimated $1.1 billion and nearly 9,000 jobs. That's just the economic impact last year alone. While we primarily focus on the Bay Area's rain chances in our daily forecast, it's actually snow that makes up more than 50 percent of the water supply across the entire western U.S. and more than 70 percent in mountain regions. Western mountain ranges act as natural water towers. Snowpack accumulates at high elevations during cooler months and melts during the warmer months, flowing downhill to recharge the reservoirs, streams, and groundwater aquifers. But since the 1950s, the West has experienced declining snowpack and a shift towards less precipitation falling as snow. Warmer winters also cause earlier snowmelt, which makes it harder for each year's snowpack to last into the warmer seasons when water demands peak. In the High Sierra, the snowpack is melting as much as three weeks earlier than just 40 years ago. These trends are likely to continue with an additional 25 percent decline in snow-derived freshwater expected by 2050 and an even greater decline by the end of the century. That, in turn, puts pressure on another important regional water source, which is groundwater. Groundwater is the water that we usually don't think about too much. It's underground water held in the cracks and pores of rocks and soil. Groundwater aquifers which are recharged by meltwater and rain uh, well, runoff, provide irrigation for agriculture and drinking water for millions of people in the West. But satellite data shows that groundwater depletion throughout the West, especially in agriculture areas such as the Central Valley, where up to 40 percent of irrigation water comes from groundwater aquifers, and up to one in five groundwater wells now runs dry during peak drought. Climate change plays a huge role in this western water stress, which is likely to continue. Human-caused climate change and its impact on snow is responsible for 30 to 50 percent of declining stream flow in the Colorado River Basin just in recent decades. Years with snow drought are projected to become more frequent in the coming decades, especially under a high-emissions greenhouse gas scenario. Adding to these problems, there is the fundamental mismatch between when the snow accumulates and when snow-derived water is needed to meet peak agricultural, ecological, and public demands in the West. Water managers and meteorologists track these seasonal cycles using the water year, a 12-month period starting every October 1st and running through the rest of the year as the snow begins to accumulate. Snow surveys on April 1st, halfway through the water year, are an important indicator of the water supply available to each meet each year, meet warm season demand. 
those numbers are going down. Snow-derived freshwater available on April 1st in the West has declined by 15 to 30 percent since 1995, 1955, a trend most noticeable just in the last 20 years. This year was no exception when the Sierra measured less than 40 percent of average snowpack on April 1st. But a widespread shift towards earlier peak snowpack also means that the April 1st snow reserve, what little there is, needs to stretch longer into the peak demand months. This year's snowpack, snowpack certainly won't stretch as far. As of May 11th, we are at 22% of normal, state, of normal snowpack statewide. While that's better than last year's ridiculously low 8%, it's far from what we need to mitigate the long-term drought and wildfire threats. The West, West's water infrastructure, which includes dams and reservoirs, has supplied its water for over a century, but it was designed to manage and store reliable spring and summer melt of the snowpack. So as the amount of mountain snowpack decreases and the timing of the snowmelt shifts earlier, water management strategies in the West are starting to adapt to low snow conditions. Existing approaches to reduce water stress on residents, ecosystems, and industries, including investing in water infrastructure, repairing aging dams, canals, wastewater facilities, and leaky pipes can conserve and enhance the water supply. Encouraging water reuse, recycling wastewater and stormwater for non-drinking uses, such as irrigating crops and flushing toilets, is an effective way to conserve water. Implementing water-efficient agriculture, water-efficient practices like drip irrigation, drought-resistant crops, and cover crops can reduce water waste and optimize soil moisture. We're already seeing those techniques being utilized in California agriculture. Finally, and this is where all of us come in, saving water at home. Western states paradoxically, have some of the country's highest rates of domestic water use per person. Water-efficient appliances and practices in home kitchens, laundry rooms and bathrooms, as well as low-water landscaping would help to reduce water demand. It's great that we're implementing some of these strategies already, but that implementation is going to have to expand over the next few decades to keep up with our changing water and snow cycle. That's it for this week's Weather Extra. Meteorologist Darren Peck will be back next week to cover another topic, and we are inviting you to play a role. If you have a weather or climate question, just email it to weatherextra at kpix.cbs.com.